Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're gonna give it a minute so that we have all of our participants at, uh, joining. Um, so if you are here, you can let us know in the chat who you are and what organization you're representing today and we'll get started in a minute. So thank you everyone again for joining us, taking some time out of your day to be here. We're excited for the post event webinar. Um, we'll have some more people kind of joining as we go, but I figure we should get started. So my name is Sarah and I'm a project manager for Richland Gifts from Mighty Cause. Um, so for today's post webinar, we're gonna pretty much talk through how you can close the loop on your Richland Gives event um, and just kind of discuss how you can continue connecting with your donors and how you can continue using the Richland Gives platform year round if that's something you're interested in. Um, we also have Maura joining us today from the Richland County Foundation, so I'm going to pass the mic over to her. Well, thank you, Sarah, and I want to congratulate everyone on a fantastic Richland Gives. We surpassed our goals for this year. Two of the goals that I had personally for Richland Gives was to increase the number of donors and increase the number of nonprofits participating. So we topped both of those goals, as well as dollars, which, you know, it looked a little iffy there in the early giving, but true to form, everyone pulled in at the last minute and put us over the top. So I'm very excited about that. So thank you. Awesome. Um, all righty, so for today's agenda, a quick look, we are going to review some ideas on how to follow up post giving event, talk about how you can find and use your donor reports and your disbursement dates. Um, we're also going to share how you can continue getting the most out of the platform, even after the event has ended, um, as your event, as your organization page continues to be available to you after the event. Um, and then, of course, if you have any questions as we're moving through this, um, we will do Q&A at the end, but you're welcome to ask questions um, and Maura can kind of moderate that uh, either in the chat or the Q&A. Alrighty. Um, so starting with follow up. Um, so even though this year's event is complete, it's time to really start to consider your follow up post event. Um, so you're really going to want to go beyond the platform tools. Um, and the automated thank yous on the donation page. Uh, so if you have not already, start to plan your thank yous, anything like sending a card, a letter, making even a video or sharing a photo of your staff can really um, kind of go a long way for adding a personal touch to donors. Um, when thanking donors and continuing your communications, you'll want to also be sure to talk about all of the impact of the funds you raised. If you are fundraising for something in particular, you're gonna wanna close the loop on that campaign. Um, like if you're fundraising for a new piece of equipment or improvements to a building or anything like that, you'll want to update and send emails periodically on your progress. Um, so even if you maybe didn't reach your fundraising goal, let them know that you appreciate it, that you're going to keep, you know, working towards the goal and then give them updates until you reach that goal. Um, donors love to be kept in the loop um, and also it just helps, you know, keep that donor retention by keeping the relationship. Um, so first things first, you're going to want to download your donation report from this year's event. You can find that within your organization profile. Um, you can view your all your donation reports and your disbursements. Um, so once you download a detailed donation report, um, you can start to kind of organize it. You can send follow up emails to your individual donors. Um, if you collected phone numbers, you can call them if that's something you do. Um, so you can find all that under reports and then all donations. Um, and then from this section, you can also filter specifically by this year's giving event to pull all that data. Um, and if you do continue using Richland Gives on a year round basis, you can continue accessing all of this information um, and pull specific time periods if you need to, like say you keep using this and you just want to pull donation reports from January, you can still do that as well. 
Um, so once you have your donation reports, you're going to want to start to organize your donor information from this year's event into whatever client management platform you use. So if you have, you know, MailChimp or another email kind of service, you're going to want to sort and use your data and continue uh, kind of fostering these relationships with donors outside the event. So that means adding any new donor emails, adding new addresses, um, tagging all of the list of donors from this year's event so that next year you can pull the group from, you know, Richland Gives 2022 and start an email kind of uh, campaign with them for 2023. Um, and like I said, of course, you have access to all of this information year round in your Richland Gives organization page, uh, but we always recommend taking the time while the event is still fresh um, to sort kind of this donor data. Um, and then if you have new donors who gave during this year's event, you're going to want to definitely make sure that you have an onboarding plan in place for them um, so that they continue to come back to donate to you again or at another point, hopefully during the year before Richland gives. Um, you can consider kind of a fun little clever onboarding welcome packet for those new donors. Um, whether that's like handwritten cards and a couple materials that you have as an organization um, to kind of get them onboarded into your organization's family. Um, and then also, of course, email is going to be a big tool all year round. Um, you'll want to get them added to an automated email journey if that's something that your email kind of service provides where you can start um, adding them and maybe they get the welcome email and then uh, maybe they get quarterly updates from you all. So kind of starting to think about what you're gonna use um, and how you're gonna use your donor data from this year. Um, and then finally, you're definitely gonna wanna take time to meet with your team internally or maybe meet with your board to really assess this year's campaign for your organization. Um, questions like, how did your organization do? What did you find successful? What would you change for next year? Um, did you reach your goal or come close to your goals? What could you adjust next year to kind of help you reach those goals? Um, and also take time to assess your marketing strategy. If you didn't reach your goal, if you didn't reach as many donors as you wanted, really kind of take the time to consider what you could change next year um, or start looking for, you know, articles and support. Uh, Mighty Cause has just a ton of blog, art, blog articles all about marketing. Um, so. Now that kind of the dust has settled, you can kind of take a look and think about what you want to do differently next year or what you want to keep the same. Um, okay, so regarding disbursements, you can see here when you can kind of plan to receive the funds donated to you during the event. So in general, if you have electronic dispersals, so if you have EFT set up, those uh, disbursements are going to happen twice a month, and they happen on a pretty consistent schedule of the 10th and the 25th of each month. So I have the dates up there for you. Um, you should have probably already received, if you have EFT, at least one uh, disbursement around the 25th of November. Um, but you'll see that for most of the rest of you, if you have checks, then all of that is going to be dispersed um, December 10th, which is coming up. I don't know where December is going. Um, all right. So, uh, so yes, if you're not set up with EFT, checks are dispersed every 10th of the month for donations made during um, the entirety of the previous month. Um, and you can see where your check will be mailed to in the legal mailing address on your organization profile. Um, and you can make edits to that if you need it within your uh, organization page. So we want to talk about how you can continue the momentum. Um, not everyone knows this, but you have access to your Richland Gives organization page year round. Um, even when the event is not happening, you are welcome to use all of the tools that are available to you. I have it all kind of listed out here. Um, by being a part of the Richland Gives um, event, you have access, and once you're registered for it, you have access to all of the Mighty Cause Essentials. So this is just um, like a ton of really great things. So if you uh, like using the Richland Gives page, um, you can continue using it. If you use a different program and you prefer Richland Gives and the format of everything, um, you're welcome to transition to just using, of course, Richland Gives. Um, so one thing to also note, if you are using Richland Gives and you realize like you need more features, um, we do offer more features on Mighty Cause. So if that's something you're interested in, you can always do an advanced trial for free. 
um, see if it's something that you need, like if you need Google Analytics or you want um, integrations with like your email, MailChimp or whatever have you, that's all available. Um, so reach out, schedule an advanced trial. Um, and then we can also, now that the dust has kind of settled, like I said, you can really take time to dig deeper into all of these features. Maybe you didn't get to play around with matching grants too much. Now is a great time to try and create a matching grant. Maybe you have, you know, something you want to try out that you didn't get to during um, the event. Um, and then I also like to always mention um, that uh, this is a really great deal for you all just because um, by just being a part of Richland Gives, you get all of these Mighty Cause um, Essentials features, which is $59 a month value. So like I said, it's available to you year round. Be sure to take advantage of it if it's something that you like to use. Um, and I'm gonna switch it over to Mara again. She can go over uh, and congratulate some of our prize winners. Yes, here's the fun part. And I, you saw on the slide uh, that grant prize incentives will be mailed out to you from the foundation uh, by the end of this month. So you'll get your uh, checks from Mighty Cause by the 10th or earlier and from us uh, before the end of the month. So, you know, this year we switched up the leaderboards and I think it was um, good because we did get more donors and we got more participation and more prizes to more nonprofits. So nonprofits could only win one leaderboard. And so how I determined the leaderboard winners when there were multiple winners for two leaderboards, such as in the small nonprofit category, uh, visual bucket list and taking root farms, both won two leaderboards. So I started with most donors and, and that's how they finished up. And then I moved over to most dollars, which in some cases on each leaderboard, it bumped up nonprofits who were finishing up out of the money to begin with. But once we figured out the one winner per leaderboard per category, it bumped up some people. So you can see the winners there. So congratulations to the uh, winners in the small, medium and large nonprofit categories. Um, you really outdid yourself, so thank you very much. The golden ticket hours, those were posted on the website at, right after the hour concluded. You could only win two golden tickets. And so in the case of Lucas Community Center and St. Peter's Catholic School, they each won two golden tickets. And then the, what I was calling the super duper golden ticket during the party, uh, that went to the friendly house. Uh, Karina Gettle at IdeaWorks won the webinar attendance. And then the organization page winner, that was uh, judged by employees at Mighty Cause. And the winner of that prize uh, was Taking Root Farms. So congratulations to all those winners. Matching grant prizes, um, it was supposed to only be two per category, and you had to meet the criteria for the matching grant, and you also had to have a 100% match on that matching grant. So as it panned out, we had no winners in the large nonprofit category. So since I had grant prize dollars left over, I decided to award um, all three small nonprofits that met the categories, or excuse me, met the criteria for their categories. So that's why you see three winners in the small nonprofit category, Taking Root Farms, Mansfield Richland Area Education Foundation and the Clear Fork Valley Foundation. And then in the medium category, one nonprofit met the criteria and that was to the North Central Ohio Land Conservancy. For the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, uh, that was also a random pool prize for those who met the uh, qualifications for the peer-to-peer -peer prize. And they had to raise at least $1,000 to qualify for that. And the winner of that was Grace Elizabeth Regal, who set up a fundraiser for the Mansfield Playhouse. The first 10 to $10,000 with 10 donors, that was not even determined till very late in the day on November 29th. So you see the winners there. Congratulations for raising the 10 
$1,000 uh, via 10 donors and being the first 10 to do so, you each won $1,000. So congratulations on that. Leaderboard random, uh, the random pool winners, you had to raise at least $1,000 by November 28th to be eligible for this random pool prize. We pulled eight winners and you see the winners right there of the $250 prize. Uh, a new prize this year was the poster prize. And if you brought a poster to the leaderboard watch party, your name was entered into a random pool drawing. And the winner of that was Catalyst Life Services. The video grant awards, we actually awarded those in the summer and those were awarded to nonprofits based on their fundraising efforts from 2021. So we will do the same thing this year. I think what I'm going to do, since we have three categories now, I think I will pull two winners from each category. And I will let you know if you won that prize, uh, probably in June, because we like to start on that project in the summer so that these marketing videos are ready prior to the start of Richland Gives. And so uh, DRM, one of our partners with uh, Richland Gives, is very gracious in giving us a discounted rate for those videos. So I'll let you know in June uh, who won the video grant awards. And it's, it's not always the very top winners because we've been doing this now for three years. And so uh, we have winners from the past three years. So we drop down on the leaderboard to find out who the next top finishers are, much like how we determined the winners in the leaderboard. So just because you did not finish uh, one, two, or three in a category does not mean you will not get a video grant award. So I'll announce those in June. Awesome. Um, all right, and congratulations, everyone. Um, so a few couple last slides. Um, we want to hear the feedback that you all have on your experience with this year's event, um, whatever that may be. Uh, we, if you've heard from your donors anything that they like or dislike, um, you can let us know. Um, and then, of course, how you feel as a nonprofit who participated this year. Um, so that feedback survey is now on the post site um, on a tab called feedback. Um, and then additionally, at the end of this webinar, we have two quick questions for you all regarding the leaderboard watch party. Um, and those are how you liked the new venue, and then if you have any suggestions to change the watch party. So you can let uh, Mara know your thoughts on that as well. Um, and then for our very last slide before we get into Q&A, um, I want you to know that the Mighty Cause support team is here for you year round. So if you need help pulling donation reports, if you're wondering why maybe some metrics are looking off, whatever um, kind of questions you have, you can reach out to our email or you can give us a call. Um, and like I said, now that you have a little more time um, with the event having ended, you can review kind of the full support articles that we have, check out the blog posts that we have um, for nonprofits, just a bunch of different tips, tricks, um, how to connect with donors, um, how to, you know, combat donor fatigue as the end of the year draws to a close. Um, there's lots of good stuff in there for you. Um, so if anyone has any questions, you can send those through. Um, but uh, like I said, thanks again to all of you for taking the time out of your day to join us for our post uh, wrap up webinar. Uh, Sarah, I do have one question that was posed to me in an email and others may be wondering the same thing if you can help with an answer. Sure. Could you please describe what a unique donor is? And yeah. what if one person has three email addresses? Um, so a unique donor is someone uh, is based on unique email address. Um, so the system is looking at donors based on email address. Um, and then depending on uh, the rules that the event has in place, uh, would kind of decide or determine um, if someone with multiple email addresses would be allowed to uh, make a donation with each one. Because first our system looks at email address and then it's going to look at um, first and last name of donor okay so in the true sense uh a unique donor is the same as a unique person yes okay There's All right. one person. Mm -hmm. i think that answers that 
Awesome. Anyone else have any questions? I see you answered one in the chat as well, Maura. I don't see any questions coming through. If anyone thinks of anything, they're welcome to reach out um, to our support team or me or Maura, uh, and we can get any questions uh, solved for you. Um, I can't believe December is nearly, I mean, it's December 6th, but my calendar is totally full for the rest of the month. So I hope you all have um, just a wonderful kind of winter holiday season. Um, and congratulations again on such a fantastic event. Thank you. Ready? Bye, everyone.